Hey Algebra 1 and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at our Chapter 7 test review. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing for number 1 is we want to find the sum. Um, remember if you're distributing a positive, nothing in this second set of terms or this polynomial will change. So I'm basically just going to go ahead and combine like 2x cubed and x cubed will go together to make 3x cubed. Negative 3x squared doesn't have anything else to go with it, so that is just going to stay the same. Positive 6x can go with negative 9x, which will make a, a negative 3x. And then a positive 1 and a negative 6 make a negative 5. So that means your answer for number 1 is 3x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x minus 5. For number 2, you do need to make sure that you pay attention that you're distributing a negative to everything in the second set of the polynomial. So that means everything's going to switch to its opposite like this. Now that I've switched everything in the second polynomial, distributing that negative, I'm going to go and combine like terms. Negative 5y cubed and negative 8y cubed make negative 13y cubed. A positive 7 or sorry, a negative 7y squared has not been able to put with anything or no like terms. So we're going to say minus 7y squared next. Again, we're keeping it in standard form. The next thing I have is 3y and a positive 4y, which makes it positive 7y. And the last thing I have is an 8 and a negative 3, which makes a positive 5. So here's my answer for number 2. Number three here says, find the sum of the perimeters of the two figures shown. So you have to find the triangle and the rectangle over here. So the triangle, I'm just going to add like terms. 3C plus 2C, that's 5C, plus another C, that's 7C. So I'm going to do a little triangle sign. 7C, and then 4 plus 1 is 5, minus 3 is 2. So the triangle is 7C plus 2. For the rectangle, though, I remember that all of the sides across from it are equal. So then I have to combine like terms here. 4C plus 4C is 8C. Another 2C is 10C. Another 2C is 12C. And then minus 2 and minus 2, that's minus 4. Then we're going to put these two together, and we're going to get 19C minus 2. For number 4, you're just finding the area of the rectangle. So that means you're doing 2C times 4C minus 2. You do need to make sure that the 2C gets distributed to everything. So 2C times 4C is 8C squared, and 2C times negative 2 is negative 4C. So that's my answer for number 4. Again, some of these questions look very similar to the ones that you have on your polynomial quiz back in the first half of our chapter. For number 5, we're going to find the product. Um, Again, best to do this with FOIL. So 3C times 3C is 9C squared. 3C times negative 2D could be negative 6CD. And then in the middle we have 2D times 3C, which is a positive 2, or sorry, positive 6CD. And then 2D times negative 2D, that's negative 4D squared. Notice that these two 6Ds, 6 CDs in the middle um, cancel out. So for number 5, we should have 9C squared minus 4D squared. Again, you can use that um, difference, the diff sum of the differences in squares by just multiplying the first and the last. For number 6, it be, might be better to write it um, out so you can see it in expanded form, like so, and then go ahead and FOIL x times x is x squared, x times negative one half is negative one half x, again negative one half x, and then a positive one fourth, negative one half, and a negative one half make a whole, so we're going to have x squared minus x plus one fourth for number six. Seven, again, writing it out in standard or expanded form would help first. <clears throat> Once you write it out in expanded form, then you can go and FOIL. 9m times 9m is 81m squared. 9m times 4n is 36mn. The same thing you'll get with your inners, 36mn. And then 4n times 4n, that is 16n squared. So my answer would be 81m squared plus 72mm. 
plus 16 squared. Oops. Not 16z. There we go. Number 8, again, you're foiling. So 4x squared times 2x squared, that's going to be 8x to the 4th. 4x squared times negative 5y is negative 20x squared y. For the middle, or the inner, negative 3y and 2x squared. I'm going to write that exactly how I wrote the negative 20. That's negative 6x squared y. And then negative 3y times negative 5y, that's a positive 15y squared. Then I'm going to combine my two inner terms. So I'm going to have 8x to the fourth minus 26x squared y plus 15y squared. Okay. And then again for number 9, I'm just going to FOIL. 3n times 2n is 6n squared. 3n times negative 9 is negative 27n. 4 times 2n is positive 8n. And then 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms here. So I'm going to have 6n squared minus 19n minus 36. And then for number 10, 2r times r is 2r squared. 2r times 8 is 16r. 5 times r is 5r. And 5 times 8 is 40. Combine like terms, we have 2r squared plus 21r plus 40. On our next page, we're factoring out completely. So first got to figure out maybe some GCFs. Remember using that summary of factoring. We do have, um, we don't have a GCF, but what we can do is factor by grouping. So what I did here is, for the first one, I factored out an A to get B plus C. So my main goal is to try to get B plus C in the second set. The second set, I'm going to factor out a negative 5 to get B plus C as well. So my answer would be B plus C times A minus 5. Number 12, I don't have a common denominator, but what I do notice is I can do the AC method. 1 times 64 is 64, and the two products, the two factors of 64 that make negative 16 are negative 8 and negative 8. So I can rewrite that as x squared minus 8x minus 8x plus 64, and then factor by grouping again. <coughs> I would take out the x in the first part, so I'd have x minus 8, and then the second part I can also take out a negative 8 to get x minus 8. I'm essentially just going to get x minus 8 two times, or essentially x minus 8 squared. You could write down either one of these answers, and they would still be counted correct. For number 13, um, looks like we can maybe determine if there is a commonality between these guys right here. And we notice that the first and the last term are, be, are square roots. So that essentially means we can have 3a plus b as our answer. Because this is called what's that perfect square polynomial. So we can basically find the square root of 9a squared and b squared. You could also write it as 3a plus b to the second power. So either one of these would work for 13. For number 14, again we're thinking about what two things can make 3 times 2. That's 6, but also have the product or the um, sum of 5, that's 2 and 3. So we could do 3c squared plus 3c plus 2c plus 2, and then factor by grouping. The first one can be, group, can be grouped with 3c, and that would be c plus 1. The second one can be grouped by 2, and that's also c plus 1. So I have 3c plus 2 times c plus 1. Number 15, it'd be best to maybe try to factor out, they all have in common an xy. So I'm going to factor out xy first to get x squared minus 2xy
plus y squared. And again, we see this, the, um, the square root possibility of the first and the last numbers. So that means we just take the square root of x and y. So that'd be x minus y times x minus y as our breakdown of, bin of the binomial. 16 is very similar. You can actually factor out 6t first. So you get t minus 3. And then that's it, because that one had a GCF. For number 17, we have what factors of negative 18 that would also make positive 7. That's going to be a positive 9 and a negative 2. So my answer would be d plus 9 times d minus 2. 18, we can maybe find the square roots of 9y squared and negative 16. That's going to be 3y and 4. And since we're showing it's a difference, one would be subtracting 3y and 4, and the other would be adding 3y and 4. For number 19, I can factor out a 2 first. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 3. And then I'm looking at the, factor, the factors of 3 that add up to 4, that's 1 and 3. So my answer would be x plus 1 times x plus 3. For number 20, it might be helpful to um, factor by grouping because there's no common factor here. So the prod 8 times 20 is 160. And through some process of elimination, 5 can go into 160 32 times. So we're going to make that negative 37 with a negative 5 and a negative 32. So I'm going to factor by grouping here. 8m squared minus 32m minus 5m plus 20. I'm going to factor out 8m. So I have m minus 4. And then factor out a negative 5, also getting m minus 4. So my answer would be 8m minus 5 times m minus 4. For 21, I'm still factoring out the polynomial completely. This is on our last page. I do have a um, GCF, so I'm going to factor out a 5 to get 7x squared minus 5x plus 1. And that would be all you would need to do there to find your answer. For number 22, you could factor by grouping. The first one you could group 2m or factor out 2m to get 3m squared plus 2. And the second one you can factor out a negative 3 to get negative to get 3m squared plus 2. And then put them together. So 2m minus 3 and then 3m squared plus 2. And then for the last one, you're just solving each equation by factoring. Remember, you want everything on the same side. So that's what I would move first. x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. I know that this can be written as x minus 2 times x plus 1. So x is equal to 2, and x is equal to negative 1. For 24, again, I can factor out my two factors binomials would be 2x minus 1 and x minus 1. So that means x is equal to 1 or x is equal to a positive 1 half. And then for the last one, remember we can factor out a 4 first and get x squared minus 1. And then we can have 4, parentheses, x minus 1 times x minus 1. That's essentially just going to give us, sorry, plus 1 and minus 1. That's going to give us x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to positive 1. Okay, that's going to conclude our review for Chapter 7. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.